What is up, you guys? It is David back here with, with another episode of the Star Policy and Fitness Podcast. I'm here with James Michaels. He is, he, he is an author. He also has um, a child with autism and another child that might have autism. And he is here to, and he, him, he himself is also working on trying to see if he has autism himself. So welcome, James. Thank you. So uh, to kind of begin um, the podcast, uh, give us a little bit about your 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 background. What do you do, um, and your a bit about your family and yourself? Well, um, so I so I'm a I'm an author. You know, I write crime thrillers. That's these books behind me on this wonderful thing my wife made. Um, and so I also ho- have a day job with the um uh, michigan department of corrections where i you know i still work oh nice and uh so um i've been there about seven and a half years and during that time you know i i met my wife we met online um she lived a few states away and she moved up here for you know so we could start our life together um and during that time we you know we got married had three kids pretty much back to back, you know, they're all within like, they're all within less than two years of each other. Um, well, yeah, I mean the, the the youngest and the oldest are about three years apart and, uh, you know, so, you know, working, you know, we were both working jobs, you know, we had my son, then we had my daughters. Um, but we noticed that, uh, my son, his speech was delayed. Um, that and a couple other mannerisms that he had, uh, which kind of started around maybe two years or so when he was two years old, and he's four now. And um, last year in the fall, we went and took him to um, the doctor's office where they, uh, uh, the, the behavioral specialist, where they diagnosed him with uh, mild to moderate autism. And based on what they told us uh, on the questions that they asked us, we realized that our middle child also checked off a lot of those boxes, maybe even more than he did. Um, I then asked them if this was, if this was genetic um, because I had passively suspected that I might have it. And when he got the official diagnosis, it really kind of rang a bell for me. Um, so since then, I've been kind of on a journey about it. Um, I was obsessed about it for about a month or so. Like just, you know, it took pretty much all my thought. I don't blame it. you, man. I don't blame you. Right. You know, when you see something like that, you kind of like, you have to take yourself aback and be like, what, what's, what's next if, if my, if one of my child is, it's expected and they can't they you know they came from my, for myself what what happens next so um you know I, I don't blame you for being you know obsessed and trying to find information yeah and um yeah it, it, it was it was definitely uh mind opening um you know i i listened to people who were older who found that they had, they had autism you know around like the age of 30 and whatnot and uh, just the kind of symptoms that they had, I've seen in myself as well as uh, my son. Um, and just, I've really paid attention to his own mannerisms now that really kind of remind me of what I used to do. Like, uh, for example, um, when he or uh, I went to his school to do a crafts thing, a uh, volunteer crafts thing. And I sat at one of the tables and, you know, I'm, I'm just helping the kids with their crafts. He comes over and um, he does one of the crafts probably because I'm sitting there. And then he goes from there instead of going to the other stations, which all of the other kids are doing, he goes and plays with trains. He's got a fixation for trains and cars. Um, so he takes that. And he's trying to play with it on the table that I'm working in. And I'm telling him, son, you know, I have to help with the kids here. I can't. We can't do trains on this. You have to go play with trains on the floor. And just, 
you know, it was that, um, it was very parallel to what I used to do when I was a kid around his age was all these other kids be playing, doing activities with each other, especially at recess. And I would be by myself, you know, kind of, um, you know, like whatever play acting, what I'd seen on TV and stuff, you know, maybe that morning. So definitely kind of, uh, it's like, it, it's almost a, like, basically a uh an alternate mindset pretty much if that makes sense right um and then how did you when it came to like the diagnosis of of your children how did you cope with that um you know just looking into it i mean thankfully for me you know my wife is you know she's very involved and very supportive um you know, it, uh, a lot of it was just, you know, just a lot of self-reflection, um, really diving into it and kind of, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person, you know, being in, in business, you have to look for um, opportunities, you know, so, and I just kind of said, okay, what are, I, I really focus on what are the possible strengths of this situation, because, I noticed that a lot of people consider autism to be a disorder. And I think for right. a lot of cases it is, but, you know, for others, you know, like if, if I have it or, if, or, you know, my son has it, I consider it more of just an alternative um, lifestyle almost not like, you know, if, if, if that makes sense. And um <laughs> this 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 is a very interesting topic and uh you know because there are certain strengths to having it if you're able to cultivate it like you know hyper focus people with autism tend to be hyper focused on certain subjects and i looked into that like dan Aykroyd, um who made ghostbusters he oh, yeah, is right. autistic and his hyper focus is on the paranormal which he used to then make wow. ghostbusters and from and he's a very successful actor um uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins from uh, the um, Hannibal Lecter, he's autistic. Uh, Daryl Hannah, um, I mean, everyone knows Albert Einstein had autism, um, but there were other other people that were suspected of it, like Henry Ford, um, Sir Isaac Newton, Leonardo da Vinci. So what I noticed about all those people is that they have that intense focus on a, on one or two particular subjects. Um, you know, for me, it's reading um, and writing. I'm able to have that kind of dead focus on it. Um, with my son, it, it seems to be so far with um, train. So I'm paying attention to what he, what really grabs his attention that's hard to break from. And then from there, you know, I believe that that's where he can be guided to what he might want to do um, for a career in, in life. Um, there's also the creativity. People with autism tend to be very creative, um, innovative, but there, there, but it does come with the drawbacks that people know about um, social situations, uh, sensitivity to, um, you know, touch, feel, sight, sound, um you know difficult to difficult to 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 break away from routine or to kind of self-regulate you know like right. me for example I kind of have to be told almost when to take a break it's hard to it's hard to find that time to say I'm gonna do <laughs> this you know like like I got off work yesterday at 10 o'clock and at night I worked 16 hours and I Oof. set my, I got, got home by about 1030 and I said, okay, time to set my alarm. I'm getting up at 420 because I don't know why it's 420, but it, for some reason <laughs> at 420, it's, 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 it's not for what people think. <laughs> um, no, I, uh, I get up at 420 because, um, on my days off, I get up at 420 every day, pretty much on my work days, on my days off. Um, because I'm up before everybody else is, so I'm, that's when I'm able, I'm able to get my writing done, um, and you know, by myself. 
And that's what I was planning on doing, you know, oh, it's only five and a half hours away. Okay. And then I forgot to set my alarm. So, or, 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 or no, it, it just didn't go off. Like the, like my phone just didn't go off. So I slept in, I was like, oh, I feel well rested. I guess that's what I needed, you know? So it's, it, it's hard to self-regulate that. Right. Right. I mean, um, you know, speaking of, speaking about, uh, your experience. I actually work with a. Um, I work with the middle school students, and one of the students I worked with uh, two years ago was autistic. And uh, when uh, I used to work with them, you know, I uh, I would, you know, he was in a reading class with me because I was a reading assistant. So um, we try to, you know, work together. And and there are times where he would he would uh, he would just sit there and not really want to read. So I would always suggest, hey, do you want me to read this with you? And eventually we would work together and read things through. And then one day I discovered a talent he had. So I was just walking around. I see, him, I see him drawing. After he got done drawing, I looked at it and I'm like, holy moly, this is like, it's like Picasso level draw, drawing right here. Like he was so talented. Like his creativity just came out and he gave, and he gave it to me. And he's like, he's like, this is for you. And I'm like, Wow, you know, it's that's beautiful, you know. Yeah. It's it's, 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 right. It's it's amazing when you kind of find that that like hidden talent. Like um one thing my son's able to do is uh he's good with puzzles, you know, like so we got this box set of these four different um puzzles. And what I'll do is I'll take the puzzle and I'll dump all the pieces of the four different puzzles onto the table. And he's able to differentiate between the four different um, puzzles. And he does them very quickly. It also, he's also very focused when he does it, wow. which, which when, when you kind of watch him, he really, you know, he tends to run around and just do a whole lot. But when he gets that focus, that's what he, that's what he wants to do. Um, and then he's also very, um, you know, he likes to play with things his way, you know, which was also very similar to me. You know, like I like to play, you know, when I was a kid, I like to play certain games how I like to play them. Um, that's probably why I never got into like online gaming, you know, because, <laughs> you know, I like to play a certain way and everybody else is going to play differently. So I said, you know what? No, no I'm just going to play by myself because um, my hyper focus is on uh, storytelling. So, Anything I do, I, I do for the story. I guess that's what got me into writing. So, um, yeah. So that, that it was it was an asset for me. Yeah, uh, for for me it's the same. Like I'm not really good at. Um, I mean, when it comes to games, I can't do any anything like you know like Call of Duty and stuff like that. But I prefer to do the story mode because uh, it's it's yourself. You know, it's at your own pace, and you can do things your own way. Just like just like you say, do things your own way. You know. You don't have to worry about others doing different things and they feel like you're kind of isolated. So I definitely agree with you on that. Right. And it, it was, it was cool because, um, you know, like I said, I, 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 I try to hone in on like, what's, what are my natural, um, what are natural assets about my character and my personality? Um, and then just pay attention to what my weaknesses are and, you know, keep those in, in, in effect. Like it's hard for me to keep in contact with people, hard for me to read situations a lot of times. Um, so like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. So I try to keep an eye out for um, the cues, but, you know, and it's, it, it's helped because um, I've really been able to, you know, it, 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 you know, for me, it's definitely, it, it hasn't, been like a um a barrier for me you know like i said i'm married i have a job i have three kids you know and i'm you know i've also found a career as a writer that i'm working on so you know in a way i'm almost thankful that that's how i am because because it's like it's just being this alternative type of person you're able to do things alternatively that most people won't do you know right most people won't get up early before the sun's up and get a whole bunch of stuff done before eight o'clock in the morning. I'm perfectly willing to do that. Um, we're also not drawn to 
like uh, a, a lot of like social um like was it like 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 social like, like like the needs to be like part of 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 a bigger group pretty much you know like i never got right. into sports um i never got into into drinking you know like i've had maybe like 12 drinks in my life um and i'm almost 30 and uh you know so i've i've also been able to avoid a lot of trouble i've gotten into other sorts of trouble but yeah. you know <laughs> you know but that's that's different usually with yeah, right usually with some other friends that i found out later on the spectrum you know um but yeah, so you know, with me, I'm you know, like it's 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 allowed me to um really get into my storytelling habit and you know make these books, you know, like I've got uh three books published. Sorry, I love this thing by the way. <laughs> I, I got this for Christmas. It's That's amazing. incredible. It's, it's, it's huge. And That's um awesome. yeah, and, and this one's publishing uh in a couple in a couple weeks. Congratulations. So, yeah, thank you. So speaking about your books, um, when you write your books, is there a bit about you in them, like about the spectrum, about what you deal with, you know, your any of your struggles? Like, do you, do you mix that in there? Well, um, so yes, but not so much about being on the spectrum. Like that was pretty relatively new um, for me. Like, like, like I've been writing since I've been writing for about four years now. Um, <clears throat> And the realization about being on the spectrum came to me in like the fall of last year. Though I would like to write a story that um, centers around that. But in a way, yes, these these characters do have um, a little bit of me in them. These two books actually are part of a series, Ice Rising and Ice Box. So these tell the story of a young man named Alexander Lincoln, who grows up with the sense of duty to protect those you love and stay off the street, which he does for a while until he's involved in a drive-by that claims the life of one of his friends and one's the little brother. So from there, he decides to join one of the, one of the gangs that's in the city because that's what he feels like he has to do to protect his family. But coupled with that sense of duty is a talent for business. He's got a oh, great business mind. So, but he uses that to further his criminal exploits. So this is a story of um misused potential really so this is based on um people that i've seen like you know working in in the prison and being in that area i've wow. met people that were actually very bright individuals um who they used their talent for you know to 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 further you know to to in the criminal world and it didn't work out for them you know they went to prison and they got out and they fixed their lives so it's a story of redemption. That's a big thing for me. It's just that whole, that whole tale of potential and how people use it. Some don't, um, and some use it for the wrong purposes. That's what these are about. Right. And then this book, uh, The Ballad of Johnny Carlo, um, this actually tells the story of two people, but Johnny Carlo, he's the namesake of the story. He's a hitman for the mafia. Um, there's a little bit of me in him. I mean, I've never killed anybody. Uh, you know, I've never been a hitman, never worked with the mafia, but it's the fact that with him, it's a, um, he takes a pride in what he does, um, which is how I am with my writing, you know, like, I don't, I don't do it for fun, I do it because it's what I realized I'm good at, so, so it's, it's why I take pride in, it's what I work to better myself on, it's what I focus, it's where my focus is, so. And then Life's Dark Corners is, that's what's coming out in um, a few weeks. And this tells the story of actually five different people. It's a collection of short stories. Um, all of them from different walks of life. Their, their stories don't link because it's all like separate stories, but they all have something in common. That's how the criminal world can kind of attach itself to their lives. You know, some of them are criminals, some aren't. Um, and it just kind of tells the story of how the how each of them deals with it. That 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 is fantastic. I actually like um each uh description you gave of each book. And uh speaking about your your books, I one of the things I like to do to do is to allow every guest, if they have a product or a book or anything, to kind of share 
with us, where can you find, you know, those, those books or where can we contact you? Um, mm -hmm. So, so where can we find your books to be able to purchase? Um, all my books are available on Amazon, all of them on Kindle and Kindle Unlimited. This one's releasing soon, so it's not available yet, but the rest of these are um, Kindle, Kindle Unlimited, paperback, and this one also has a hardcover edition to it. Awesome. And what I'll do is, um, of course, at the end of this episode, I usually have, I'll put the links in the description. Um, and James, I've actually enjoyed this this episode because uh, we I feel like, um, you know, we centered around a lot, a lot of our disabilities and what we deal with. And of course, your your journey itself is, is phenomenal. And the, the fact that you're able to balance all this is incredible. And and Speaking about balance, it's so crucial when it comes to raising kids uh, with with disabilities. You know, that you, you tend to, and you have that, and I commend you for that. Thank you. So uh, if you're looking to uh, find this episode, you're going to find it on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and every other major podcasting outlet out there. James, thank you so much again for being on. And until next time, have a good one. You too.